Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is actually going to be a review of the Skypad 2.0 XL in white. If you guys saw my last couple of videos, you probably noticed that I was using the Skypad 2.0 and when I first bought this pad, I didn't really know what to expect, whether or not I would like glass or not. Um, I previously did when playing Professional Counter-Strike actually use the SteelSeries Ice Mat um, and also their steel pad, which I thought were uh, pretty cool back in the day. Everybody kind of flipped out over it and they're like, oh wow. Um, it was kind of something that like, you know, none of us had ever seen before because we were used to using the worst cloth pads on the planet at the time. You know, we didn't have any of the cloth pads that are out nowadays. Um, but I do want to cut into some clips. I think I'm playing very, very well with it. And you get, if you guys are used to my channel, you can kind of judge whether or not I am playing better, if I'm playing worse. Um, I think that this is one of my top performers. Um, and after the clips, I do want to get into some comparisons with the other top five pads that I had in my uh, top five stat testing video. And we can compare how much control you gain or lose on the tempered glass pad. And we can get into, you know, my thoughts and opinions on who this pad is for. But let's cut into the Apex and CS slash Valorant clips. All clips were made using a uh, Orochi V2 with default stock skates. And just to get into it guys with the comparison, this is a Artisan Zero mid. I have my Tiger Esports Abba, I've got my Extrify GP4, I've got my Odin Infinity, and I've got my Minerva with the Sky Pad on the bottom. And just to give you guys a glide test with the Artisan Zero mid, um, you know, it's certainly a, a, a nice cloth pad, probably one of the top quality pads. It was my top performer in my stat testing and aim labs. And the glide is actually easy to pick up with the skates on the Orochi. As you can see, it's got a nice little bit of stopping power after the end of the glide, uh, but dynamic friction is not the highest. It is very easy to move your mouse around the pad without having any issues with feeling like the pad is muddy or pinching down or stopping uh, the mouse pad from letting your mouse just go. And the next pad, the Tiger Esports Abba, it's Kind of the same thing. I actually feel that the dynamic friction is higher on the um, Artisan Zero Mid. It is a little bit easier to get your mouse moving on the Tiger Esports Abba. And I do feel that it is a pad with very nice controlled micro management and movements and control for those little adjustments. Um, awesome pad, absolutely love it. And you can see how the glide is on this control pad. On the Extra 5 GP4, it's also one of my top and favorite pads. The color is fantastic, and it does have a lot more dynamic friction than both the Artisan Zero Mid and the Tiger Esports Abba. But you can see again that it is not um, really inhibiting your mouse from moving. And as I described in my other video, it just has a pinch of muddiness to it. So it is a very nice control pad and probably what I would say is my favorite control pad um, to, you know, to actually be in a classification of control pads. But it just has a really nice glide and really, really nice stopping power. 
The Odin Infinity is a hybrid pad and I actually kind of put it into a middle category between speed and control. Um, I would definitely say it has a lot of control. The dynamic friction is pretty similar to the Zero Mid. Um, the Tiger Esports Ubba definitely has less. Uh, it's easier to get the mouse going on the Ubba. And micro movements, again, are very, very controlled and probably more static friction, in my opinion, than the Artisan Zero Mid and the Tiger Esports Ubba. So definitely a nice pad, a nice hybrid between control and speed. The Minerva, <clears throat> likewise, is a, uh, another pad that's kind of like the Zowie GSRSC. Out of the box, it is a coated pad, so it is the one that is going to degrade the fastest. Uh, but the pad has really, really nice stopping power. You can see that it kind of comes to a complete stop a little bit faster than the other pads, except maybe the Extra 5 GP4. And again, static friction is fairly um, decent, kind of a middle ground, so micro movements do feel somewhat muddy, but uh, very, very controlled and not to a point like the GameSense Radar, uh, where you kind of feel like you're going against resistance. So another very, very good pad, and you can see the glide there kind of coming to a complete stop with dynamic movements. And surprisingly, when we get to the sky pad, with those movements, you can see that the mouse pad literally has just as much control as far as dynamic friction as a pad like the Minerva or the Extra 5 GP4. So it's actually very interesting that the pad has such control with those fast movements. Um, and the thing that I really, really like about the pad that separates it from the other pads is because it is a glass mouse pad, the static friction is very, very low. So I feel like my micro adjustments in CSGO and Valorant are very, very minute and very, very easy. So as a wrist aimer, I feel like I have just a ton of control with my ability to micro move my crosshair to get that light little flick. Um, and I, I'm just playing extremely well with it in CSGO and Valorant as far as flicking and getting onto a head and staying there. And uh, I feel like the tracking in Apex is likewise beautiful. Um, I showed you guys clips from Apex with the tracking, but I do want to show you that the pad is very, very good for micro adjustments and flicking the heads in games like uh, Valorant and CSGO. And the box that the product is shipped in is actually extremely uh, high quality. I mean, when you actually get this thing in the mail and you open this thing up, you really do feel like you're opening a very, very premium product. So A plus on the packaging. They kind of go over the processes that they use to make the glass mouse pad somewhat unbreakable. You know, they go through the heating and the cooling process saying that it's made out of frosted glass and it's hardened then heated to 650 degrees and then shot cooled and due to the rapid cooling, tensions arise in the glass making it very strong. And they say that the glass mouse pad is impossible to scratch, very sturdy, etc, etc, etc. And I would go through that in the video and show you guys uh, throwing the mouse pad around and trying to break this thing. But, uh, you know, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that you guys can look at to see that this thing is very, very high quality and very, very sturdy and will probably last you a lifetime. Some reviewers were making issue of the fact that it is a little bit raised off your desk. I don't have any issue with that at all. Um, I actually enjoy this more because my, my arm or my wrist aren't grinding against a stitched edge, um, which do degrade over time on some pads. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I just, I don't feel that lip when I'm moving my arm, at least the way that I've positioned the mouse pad on my desk. And this thing is exceptionally good as far as sticking to your desk. And I would say my only complaint with the mouse pad for me personally um, I don't have issues much with things like hairs or anything like that getting on the mouse pad. Um, but every once in a while, you know, something will get on the pad as far as like a, a hair, a dog hair, you know, something. 
um, and uh, you can hear more audibly like a little of grind if there's ever anything between your mouse and the mouse pad. Um, but with my headphones on, I don't notice it at all. I've never been affected in game. You know, I've never been thrown off and lost a fight in Valorant, CSGO, or Apex as a result of that issue. It doesn't affect my tracking. Um, it's just, you know, if my headphones are off and I'm moving my mouse around, it's kind of like, uh, that's not the most pleasant thing to listen to. Um, but honestly, separate and apart from that, I would prefer to uh, use the pad that I'm playing the best on. And right now, in all honesty, that is the SkyPad. Um, so it's going to stay on my desk until something else for me personally outperforms that. And I can say that as long as you are a... Um, skilled aimer and a skilled gamer and you're comfortable with your movements, um, this could be a great pad for you. If you are somebody who is more so a novice, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend the pad because it requires definitely a lot of refined micromanaging and movements with your mouse. And if you are an over aimer already or an under aimer, um, this could be something that might not necessarily be the best thing for you. If you're an under aimer, it could actually help you correct it because the static friction is so low. Um, but if you are an over aimer already and you find yourself making big sweeping movements uh, more so than not, um, this pad could be kind of a hindrance to you. So I don't recommend this pad for everybody. Um, if you're a wrist aimer and you have really good control, um, I think it's an absolutely phenomenal pad. And even if you are a novice and you're feeling, you know, kind of adventurous and you don't want to stick to the same old cloth pads and you're tired of your cloth pads and your humid climate kind of going to poop, um, this could be a exceptionally good mouse pad to try. And, you know, for all you know, you might play really, really well with it or you might play really, really bad with it. So, you know, it's really a pad I could see going kind of a 50-50 direction with a lot of the average consumer. Uh, but for me personally, again, it's my top pad right now. And for me, uh, for my own personal needs with the quality of the pad and how good I'm aiming with it, how good the stopping power is and how good the micro control is and movement. Uh, for me, it is a top tier pad. It's my number one right now and it's gonna stay on my desk until I get something better. I hope that helped if you were kind of on the fence about getting a sky pad. Again, it's either going to really, really work or really just not be your fancy. Um, so I would be careful with how much the pad costs in making a purchasing decision. Um, but you know, again, worth a try. So thanks guys for stopping by. I hope that helped. If it did, leave a subscription to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.